vue extérieure d'une façade en verre, avec, au-dessus, une structure en hauteur allumée. Texte à l'écran, Musée canadien pour les droits de la personne. Good morning, bonjour. Welcome to the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. Bienvenue au Musée canadien pour les droits de la personne. We're very excited to welcome all of you for our annual public meeting. La scène change. Une femme se tient devant un lutrin, à côté d'un drapeau du Canada. Bienvenue aussi à ceux et celles qui assistent à notre réunion par web diffusion. Merci de vous joindre à nous aujourd'hui. We welcome also those who are viewing this on our live stream. Thank you for joining us this morning. I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we are on Treaty 1 territory and in the heartland of the Métis people. And that's a tremendous opportunity and responsibility for the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. And I also hope that as you're entering into the building, you notice the magnificent artwork that is behind us. It was created by 168 students in all 77 schools of the Winnipeg School Division. It's called Everybody Has the Right. Text à l'écran. Angela Cassie, directrice, communication et des relations externes. And the work is a mural, and it started in September to actually celebrate the inauguration of the museum. Now it's complete, and yesterday a group of students arrived to put it together. Art is a wonderful way to provoke conversations about human rights. We see that throughout our galleries. So thanks to all the students in Winnipeg School Division Number 1. The School Division's art consultant, Joe Hallis, is here. He spearheaded the project. Do I see Joe? Fait un signe de la main et applaudit. Thank you, Joe. La caméra fait un panoramique sur le public. And being interviewed right now, busy being interviewed as one of the two students who also contributed their artwork. Uh, so already they're able to talk about their art, talk about the importance and how their school became engaged. So thank you for that. Before we move into the formal program, I'd like to just uh, do a little bit of housekeeping. You can find the washrooms both on the right and the left uh, to the coat check and admission area, which is just over there. Et pointe vers sa gauche. Um, vous trouverez les salles de toilette à droite et à gauche du vestiaire et de la billetterie. Simultaneous interpretation is also available. If you haven't already done so, you can pick up a headset at the back of the room. Channel 1 is English to French translation, and Channel 2 is French to English translation. Une service d'interprétation simultanée est offerte. Si ce n'est pas déjà fait, vous pouvez prendre un casque d'écoute à l'arrière de la salle. La chaîne 1 est pour la traduction de l'anglais au français, et la chaîne 2 est pour la traduction du français à l'anglais. And to my left is our ASL interpreters. If you require ASL interpretation, I invite you to come closer to the room that it's visible for you. And please note that we are live streaming this meeting, and we also have a photographer on site. And so the buzz that you hear all around us is the visitors, are the visitors in the museum. And our early calculation is that there are already 600 people moving through the galleries on International Human Rights Day. So what an exciting opportunity for us to use this day to inspire people with human rights. But we have an inspiring agenda for you here today as well with our annual public meeting. We'll hear from the Vice Chair of the Museum's Board of Trustees, John Young, Chief Financial Officer, Suzanne Robertson, Interim President and Chief Executive Officer, Gail Stevens, Director of Revenue and Visitor Services, Jacques Laverne, and Elder David Crochane will speak about an exciting new program and cultural experience that will be launching in January. But we'll save more details about that in a little while. And we have a few introductions as well to be made prior to his, in, his presentation. Following the speeches, we'd like to hear from you. So during our question and pe uh, answer period, we will have a few mics roaming. For those that are watching online, you can also submit your questions by tweeting us at hashtag CMHR2014 or through our Facebook page. This question period is for the members of the public. Alors vous pouvez envoyer vos questions par Twitter en utilisant le mot clic MCDP 2014 ou sur notre page Facebook. Our speakers will be available after the four formal program for questions from the media. And now, without further ado, please join me in welcoming John Young to the stage, stage Vice Chair of the Board of Trustees, le Vice-President du Conseil d'administration pour le Musée canadien pour les droits de la personne. 
Elle s'éloigne du lutrin pendant qu'un homme s'approche. Elle ajuste le microphone vers le haut, puis elle s'assoit sur un siège sur la scène. Thank you, Angela. Good morning. I'm delighted to welcome you to the Canadian Museum for Human Rights annual public meeting. This is an historic occasion. Today marks the first annual public meeting held inside this beautiful building. On September 20th, we welcomed the public for the first time. While we initially anticipated that all the exhibits would be open for visitors the following week, we were unable to provide full access to all galleries until the second week of November. The guided tours that the museum offered through the building and through galleries during this time were very well subscribed. And we are pleased that all 11 galleries are now open and that human rights stories unfold all around us in interactive and in inspiring ways, like the one told in the circular theater in Indigenous Perspectives, shown on the screen. On behalf of the Board of Trustees, I would like to take a moment to thank every staff person within the museum, our many volunteers, and the Friends Fundraising Organization for helping to make this amazing visitor experience possible. Text à l'écran. John Young, vice-président du conseil d'administration. The board would also like to thank past president and CEO Stuart Murray for his years of service and diligence to the museum, as well as Gail Steele. Silence pendant une demi-minute. Gail's extensive leadership and senior management experience cross-functional teams. I would also like to thank my fellow board members, some of whom are here today for their commitment and devotion to this project. The board's vision for the museum during its first five years <clears throat> is to host human rights exhibits of enduring significance and to create a space that is a center for educating current and future generations to inspire a sense of appreciation for the foundational rights and freedoms that we all have and enjoy because we are human beings. We envision a vibrant facility that encourages innovative and creative thinking. This year's completion of this monumental capital project, which includes this new building and the new exhibits represents a major achievement. The museum has become a reality thanks to a unique collaboration among public sector, corporate, union, and individual contributors. Photo du musée avec les gratte-ciels de Winnipeg en arrière-plan et le texte Mon clic MCDP 2014. Now our focus shifts to maintaining and enhancing this world-class facility. We are moving ahead with plans to complete a temporary gallery located through the glass doors behind you. Completion of this gallery will give the museum the capability to host major traveling exhibits and offer compelling new reasons to return to the Museum for Human Rights. <clears throat> the museum also has a space set aside for the future development of a large theater just down the hall from here. This will be a space to host films, special events, and panel discussions in a first-class venue. These two longer-term infrastructure projects will help the museum participate in some of the world's most sought-after exhibits and shows. The museum is fast becoming a center for human rights education. Through the development of a national student program, we will engage Canadian high school and post-secondary students in relevant, meaningful learning opportunities. Photos de personnes qui regardent et touchent des panneaux d'information placés à l'horizontale, à hauteur de la taille. Students will return to their home communities across Canada, inspired to make change and speak out about the value of human rights and fundamental freedoms. Education will continue to be a cornerstone of the museum's mandate. This museum is the only one of its kind. It provides enormous opportunity to attract international visitors to this wonderful city. The museum will work to capitalize on this unique status 
through diversification of our earned revenue sources and an entrepreneurial approach. On the other side of this equation is responsible cost management and fiscal restraint. In this first operating year, the museum will collect baseline data, and these data will be used to refine annual budgets for the five-year period following inauguration. Photo de personnes à l'intérieur des galeries. Each visit to the Canadian Museum for Human Rights is an opportunity to discover something new, to explore a different human rights theme, and to learn from the different perspectives of Canadian and international human rights defenders. In less than three months, the Canadian Museum for Human Rights has already made a difference, helping Canadians learn about foundational human rights and our human rights stories. Photo de personnes d'âge différents et de différentes origines ethniques. These stories of freedom and democracy, struggle and adversity, respect and responsibility, these stories belong to all of us. Today marks International Human Rights Day, and in honor of this day, admission is free for all visitors. I encourage everyone to visit the museum after this meeting, or to take part in one of the events and activities taking place later today and this evening. To everyone watching the live webcast, I hope you can start planning your visit soon. La caméra se tourne vers le public, puis de nouveau vers le lutrin. Thank you for joining us here today. Il quitte la scène et Angela Kessy retourne au lutrin. Merci. Thank you, John. Up next is the museum's chief financial officer, Suzanne Robertson, la chef des opérations financières du musée. Suzanne. 2008. Welcome, Suzanne. Suzanne remplace Angela au lutrin et elle met ses lunettes de lecture. Thank you, Angela. It's a pleasure for me to take part in this first annual meeting held inside the museum. I have been with the museum since the early days of the project, and this building has emerged from artist drawings on a page into a meeting space that welcomes people, all people, with words of welcome literally written on the wall. I am proud of the design and engineering awards that this building is receiving, by, but I am even prouder that we have created a space where people talk to each other about hum, important human rights issues. Text à l'écran, Suzanne Robertson, chef des opérations financières. In 2013 and 14, the museum's capital activity included completion of the base building, fit up of the gallery spaces, and exhibit planning, design, and fabrication. Trois photos. La première montre trois robes rouges suspendues. La deuxième, une perspective extérieure du musée. Et la troisième, deux grands écrans verticaux. In January of this year, the staff moved into the building. At year end, on March 31st, 2014, the base building was 99% complete, and the budget for the capital project remained on track at 351 million. The museum's architecture continues to amaze national and international visitors and the structure has taken its place as one of the iconic images on the Winnipeg skyline. Final audited results for the capital project will be reported in the coming 14-15 fiscal year. The museum received 21.7 million in total operating appropriations in 2013-14. These dollars were applied to exhibits, content, and program development, salaries and benefits, and building operations and systems development. The museum finished the year in a positive operating position of 432,000. Operating appropriations of 21.7 million are forecast again for the 2014-15 fiscal year. Photo d'un immense espace supérieur à l'intérieur du musée, montrant plusieurs niveaux de bureaux, un réseau de supports structuraux et une étendue de nombreux carreaux de verre. Ensuite, La couverture du rapport annuel 2013-2014 comportant une image de musée avec le mot « open » en gros caractère et l'adresse Internet droit de la personne. Point ça. Une troisième diapositive présente plusieurs photos de personnes jeunes et moins jeunes avec le texte Assemblée publique annuelle 2014. Our annual report is posted on the museum's website and in addition, the museum posts quarterly financial reports and they are also available on the website for review. 
As John mentioned, the museum's first full year of operations will provide important baseline information, which will be used to refine our projections for operational expenses and earn revenue in the years to come. Thank you for taking part in the annual public meeting and for being here on Human Rights Day. Merci, Suzanne. Thank you, Suzanne. I would now like to introduce our interim president and chief executive officer, Gail Stevens, la présidente directrice générale par intérim. Gail stepped into this interim position in November, having previously served as the museum's chief operating officer. Please join me in welcoming Gail. Gail remplace Angela Oulutra. Thank you, Angela, and welcome, everyone. Bienvenue. It is a pleasure to speak to you today on International Human Rights Day. If you've visited the museum before, you'll know that the photos behind me is taken in our introductory gallery, What Are Human Rights? The words are from Article 1 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. All human beings are born free and equal in dignity and rights. We put these words in a place of prominence on a two-story wall to remind us whenever we live, wherever we live, whatever our background, we are all entitled to human rights. That's really what the Canadian Museum for Human Rights is all about. It's a wonderful starting point. In this place, we learn about the ideals that we can all strive to meet. A visit to the museum is a challenge to think about human rights in new ways to share views and experiences, to discuss and debate ideas, and to be inspired. On opening weekend in September, 9,000 people came for preview tours of select museum galleries, in some cases lining up in the rain to be the first to visit. Opening a museum for human rights is a special occasion, and people from across the country and around the world came to be part of history. Photo de personnes faisant la file à l'extérieur du musée, certaines d'entre elles sous la pluie. Une autre photo d'un grand écran horizontal à l'intérieur du musée qui montre des femmes sud-américaines en costume traditionnel et grande jupe rose. Kofi Annan, the seventh secretary general of the United Nations, and had this to say, human rights education is much more than a lesson in schools or a theme for a day. It's a process to equip people with the tools they need to live lives of security and dignity. Each day, the museum's exhibitions promote conversation and reflection about human rights and help to equip people with focus they can use in their daily lives. The museum does this day in and day out for this generation and for all those that follow. In most of the galleries, you will notice digital stations like these ones on the screen. Photo de deux postes où les visiteurs du musée s'assoient pour accéder à du contenu multimédia. À l'arrière des stations se trouvent des portraits de personnes plus grands que nature. These stations hold an incredible amount of information, usually expanding upon the stories, photos, or people highlighted in the exhibits. Often, you will find videos of people telling their own stories in their own words. 185 people have already sat down with us to tell us their stories on camera. These oral histories are now an incredibly important part of the museum's collection. In August, we launched our new website with new functions. For example, the website supports the pur purchase of admission tickets and membership packages. Just last month, we launched our new app, which is available for free on the iTunes in English et en Francais. This app is another way to enrich your visit to the museum. La caméra fait un panoramique sur le public et révèle l'activité sur un mur latéral où des silhouettes griffonnent des mots. Retour à Guérano Lutrin. Une autre photo montre environ 100 personnes réunies pour une photo de groupe. Avec le texte, notre personnel. This past year was a year of transition as we moved from planning and development stage into full operations. Our hiring in advance of inauguration focused on the visitor experience as we recruited people to support public programming, museum operations and security. 
At the same time, we said farewell to many employees who assisted us in the planning and the development phase. The museum continues to engage a diverse, talented staff with wide-ranging skills and specialties. The dedication they bring to their work and their passion for human rights education is unparalleled. The museum has also been very fortunate to have recruited and trained high-caliber volunteers. I'd like to share some feedback from a recent email we received from a resident of British Columbia. After his visit, he wrote to tell us that staff and volunteers are the best he had encountered in any museum. Friendly, knowledgeable, and helpful. Vu du public, pendant que deux silhouettes blanches sur fond noir écrivent en anglais et en français le mot bienvenue, un homme se tient près de la scène et interprète en langage ASL. And it's this kind of feedback that is so gratifying and speaks to both the quality of our staff and our volunteers and also the quality of our visitor service excellence training. Our volunteers perform so many tasks that are so vital to the visitor experience, from welcoming visitors as they arrive, providing complimentary coat check services, to providing hospitality and wayfinding services. Our volunteers dedicate thousands of hours of service in the museum each month. The museum simply could not function without them. Les silhouettes, l'une utilisant un fauteuil roulant, continuent d'écrire sur un mur à côté du public. The museum generates revenue through several means, including general admission, memberships, facility rentals, the boutique, and the Arab Bistro. You'll hear more about these earned revenue opportun opportunities shortly. Photo du bistro, de la boutique et de certains de ses produits. I'll just say that this building has, been, has seen very little downtime since our opening weekend. We have hosted visitors day and night, seven days a week. This fall, the museum has been hosting educators' open houses. These have given teachers and school leaders an opportunity to get to know the museum and its program before they bring their students to come visit. The next stage is to actually welcome the students. In January 2015, we will launch our school programs, and we already have nearly 18,000 students in more than 500 sessions booked to participate. Photo de jeunes participants à différents exercices dont la création d'illustrations. It's so exciting to think about the young people who will be visiting the museum and who will take what they learn back to their families and their home communities. The vision of this museum started with the need to educate young Canadians about human rights and about human rights history. Our education program will always be a very core function of this museum. If you'd like to keep in touch with the museum, I invite you to join the conversation on Facebook or Twitter, or send us a message through our Contact Us page. Now we've come to the part of the program where we're going to share some very exciting news. In January, in partnership with First Nations elders, the museum is launching an exciting new cultural experience. Mikanak Kia will be an exploration of rights and responsibilities from a First Nations perspective. Visitors will spend 90 minutes with one of our museum's Indigenous program interpreters, exploring traditional stories and some of the symbolism inherent within the building and its architecture. Une image d'une tortue en couleur, vue de dessus. Sa carapace est composée de plusieurs segments, chacun comportant un symbole. Chacune de ses quatre pattes comporte une tache colorée, soit blanc, rouge, jaune ou noir. À côté sont écrits les mots Mikinakia. The experience will take place in several programming times, providing an intimate and contemplative atmosphere for discussion. And in just a few minutes, one of the elders will share more about this very special cultural experience. On behalf of the museum, I'd like to thank all of the participating elders sharing their gifts with us. At the end of your visit to the museum, I hope that you'll feel inspired and leave remembering some words written in our introductory gallery, that we all have a responsibility to respect each other's rights and to protect fundamental freedoms. Thank you so much for joining us here today. Elle quitte la scène. Angela se lève de son siège à proximité sur la scène et s'approche du butin. Thank you, Gail. 
Now, please join me in welcoming Jacques Laverne, the museum's director of revenue and visitor services, le directeur des revenus et des services aux visiteurs, Jacques. Angela est remplacée au lutrin par Jacques Laverne. Merci, Angela. Good morning. As Canada's national, newest national museum, our goal is to offer each visitor with a superior experience on par with some of the best museums across the globe. Texte à l'écran. Jacques Lavergne, directeur, revenus et services aux visiteurs. By providing outstanding bilingual service and an unparalleled exploration of human rights, our visitors are more likely to want to make a return visit, to purchase a membership, or to purchase an item from the boutique as a way to remember and even extend their visit. Chaque personne qui entre dans le musée est importante parce qu'elle veut devenir ambassadrice pour le musée. C'est pourquoi nous visons à ce que chaque interaction et puis chaque visite soit positive et enrichissante. Surpassing our initial projections, the museum welcomed just under 60,000 visitors in October and November alone through ticketed admission, booked events, public programming, membership, and visits to the boutique and era bistro. Initial word of mouth feedback tells us that we're succeeding in providing a very high level of service for all these visitors. Soon we'll be conducting our own visitor surveys as a more formal way to capture this important feedback. Nous ferons bientôt des sondages auprès des visiteurs et des visiteurs pour recueillir ces commentaires de façon plus officielle. Nous voulons continuer à offrir un excellent service à la clientèle. Photo de personnes dans un théâtre circulaire. This morning, I'm going to highlight one segment of visitation that has particularly exceeded our expectations. Je veux parler ici du musée est devenu une destination pour les gens qui veulent présenter une programmation sérieuse et intéressante à leurs clients ou à leurs invités. La scène change. La caméra montre le public et les silhouettes qui écrivent sur le mur, suivi d'une photo de nombreuses personnes réunies au jardin de rocailles à l'intérieur, puis de retour à Jacques au Lutrin. Referring to how the museum has become a destination for people who want to offer meaningful programming to their customers or guests. Not surprisingly, many groups come here because the work they do is somehow connected to human rights and they want their guests and employees to experience the museum. Often these groups will request custom tours that highlight specific areas of human rights content. These groups choose the preferred venue for holding challenging and inspiring human rights conversations. Other groups choose the museum because of its interesting architecture and unique use of space. Ces activités de groupe font que des visiteurs et visiteuses non traditionnels viennent au musée. En offrant des programmes publics avec la location de nos salles, nous pouvons intéresser des gens qui ne seraient jamais autrement venus à ce musée ou à n'importe quel autre musée. Often bring non-traditional museum visitors through our doors. By offering public programming in combination with our facility rentals, we're able to engage with people who might not otherwise ever have the opportunity to visit a museum. This is a wonderful opportunity for us to share the powerful stories of human rights that are found right here. We're forecasting that these booked events, including custom programming, will account for 18% of museum revenue if current trends continue through to the end of March 2015. That's the peach-colored piece of the pie that you see in front of you. Un diagramme en secteur est présenté avec le titre Source de revenus, prévision au 31 mars 2015. La portion de couleur pêche montre les activités de location et programmation sur mesure à 18 Les ventes au détail en bleu à 21 Les droits d'entrée et visite guidés en rouge à 44 Et les adhésions en vert à 17 Nous guidés constitueront la plus grande source de revenus, soit 44 la partie rouge du graphique. Admission tickets and tours are forecast to account for the largest source of earned revenue at 44%, and that's the red piece of the pie. Our retail sales are in blue and represent revenue earned at the museum's boutique, and we're forecasting that retail sales will account for approximately 20% of earned revenue. Les additions vont plutôt bien. De nombreuses personnes qui visitent le musée pour la première fois décident d'appliquer le prix de leur billet d'entrée envers une addition. Nous nous attendons à ce que les additions comptent pour 17 des revenus autogénérés qu'on voit ici en vert. Membership sales have been quite strong, with many first-time visitors deciding to apply the price of their admission tickets towards the purpose of a membership. We expect membership to account for 17 of total earned revenue shown here in green. In sum, each day we welcome an average of 1,000 visitors, and this includes ticketed admissions, membership visits, and people who participate in public programming and events with the museum as well as people who visit the boutique and era bistro. Every visit represents a potential new ambassador for the museum, and every visitor is important. 
J'espère que vous aurez tous et tous l'occasion de visiter le musée ainsi que la boutique et le bistrot. I hope that you had the opportunity to visit the museum and visit the boutique and bistro, whether it's the communal tables in the Ira Bistro or the, core that, the care that we take to select the products in the boutique. We're aiming to provide each visitor with an experience that connects with human rights. Photo de visiteurs qui regardent des objets dans la boutique. The, today, the museum is offering visitors a chance to meet some of those artisans who create some of the unique products found in the boutique. I encourage you to talk with them and learn from the stories they have to share. Notre but de vous faire vivre une expérience exceptionnelle dans tous ces aspects. Merci, thank you. Certains membres du public applaudissent, puis Angela réapparaît au micro. Merci, Jacques. And if you didn't catch that, he was saying the store is open, but if you would like, the program is going to go a little bit longer, so please don't run out and shop quite yet. Some great products in the store. I have the great fortune now to introduce um, all of the elders that are part of the Elders Circle 7 group. Um, one of them is absent today because of a different commitment, but it's fantastic that so many of them were able to join us. Uh, so I'll begin with Peter Atkinson. <laughs> yeah. Henry Skywater. William Easter. Sherry Kofinans, Harry Bone, and Elder David Crochane, who will be speaking on behalf of the group. Robert Green was not able to join us. Uh, and what's important is that the efforts and what David will be speaking of is really an effort that was jointly produced by all of the elders. And we just wanted to thank you and recognize all of you. And I know that Dave will speak a little bit more to the role. So please join me now in welcoming Elder David Crochane to the stage to introduce more formally our Mikanakea program. Un homme monte sur la scène. Angela lui verse un verre d'eau et s'assoit sur son siège. Texte à l'écran. David Gourchen, leader et fondateur de Turtle Lodge. Thank you very much, uh, Angela. Bonjour. Marine. Dene Magni. Nigani Akin and Edish Nikas, can you do thing? Welcome, my relatives, to the center and to the heart of Turtle Island the sacred place of Manituape. Today we come forward to share a gift from the original peoples. Let me begin by offering words of gratitude to the great spirit, Gijé Manitou, for the great vision of life. Today I call upon the spirit of the ancestors to join us as we bring forward this sacred gift, which we refer to as Mikinakea, the trail of the turtle. As the original free and independent peoples of this land, we have the distinction of being the roots of our homeland. This positions us with the responsibility to be the true leaders and the voice of our homeland. Derived from the original domain of spirit, we present Mikinakea, the trail of the turtle, the spirit tour, as our gift to the Canadian Museum for Human Rights and all peoples of the world. For the original peoples, Mother Earth is the face of the Great Spirit. In our belief system, everyone and everything is governed first by spiritual laws. The values that connect us to a higher power and inspire us to have a spirit of Kijeatiziwen to become beings of kindness. For the original people, human rights do not come from paper. They are not man-made. They come from the Great Spirit. Everyone and everything is held together and governed by spiritual laws 
and natural laws. Laws that are woven into the fabric of creation and written upon the earth. We refer to this as the great binding law of the Great Spirit. La caméra effectue un zoom sur une forme circulaire illuminée sur le mur avant de revenir à David. The original peoples of this land continued to live in an environment of imposition and marginalization, which has denied our inherent right to be an autonomous and self-determining people. In our language, there is a term, kiogona, meaning the burying of a way of life, the genocide and the suppression of a people and their sacred teachings through colonization, secular legislation, and ignorance describes our recent and continued experience. But there is a saying amongst our people. They tried to bury us but they didn't know we were the seeds, the seeds of the future that carry a vision that can unite us all and can help bring back the memory of the original instructions on how to be a human being. This tour is meant to appeal to the hearts of humanity, to move beyond our divisions our separation, our disrespect, and our violence to build together a healthier, peaceful world that includes the spirit and the earth as a foundation for all human rights. By sharing the spiritual laws and natural laws of our people, this tour is designed to plant a seed of living truth in the heart, a seed that will grow into a rooted respect and love for the land and all creation, and inspire us to the highest values of behavior toward the earth and humanity. This tour originates from the spirit of our ancestors, and it offers an introduction to sacred teachings that will continue to mature after the tour experience. As a people, we have always received guidance and direction from our dreams, our visions, and our ceremonies. This tour was designed based on those dreams, visions, and ceremonies of our people. Since our beginning, as the original peoples of this land, we have gathered on a sacred site in close proximity, in proximity to the museum, a site even older than the Forks, the site that we refer to as Manitou Ape, one of the most revered and significant sacred sites of the original peoples of Turtle Island. Historically, our nations would arrive by land and by water at the Forks and travel from here to Manitou Ape. All the content of this tour begins at Manitoupe, which is a place of healing, direction, and vision, located in the geographical center of North America. Just as much as the museum is an expression of human rights, Manitoupe is the expression of the spiritual and natural laws which this tour is based on. The Spirit Tour was developed through an equal partnership between the elders of Circle 7 and the Canadian Museum for Human Rights, acknowledging the true leadership of the original people 
in the development of this tour. We are proud and honored to share this precious gift as it reflects the richness of our identity and our close connection that we have with Mother Earth, the source of all life. This gift is our way of inspiring the collective human family to remember our original instructions on how to be a human being and to live in accordance with the principles of respect, love, courage, honesty, wisdom, humility, and truth. The importance of this tour is to reinforce the significance of our spiritual identity, which is inclusive to all cultures. We must not continue to overstep the guidance of spirit, and we must not overstep Mother Earth anymore. Nature has become sick because of our behavior of selfishness and ignorance. And as much as we have been impacted as human beings, because of disconnect from higher spiritual and natural law, we have affected the animal and plant world to the extent that the animals and plants have become very sick because we have shown so much disrespect for the air, the earth, and the water, the elements of life. If we really reflect upon the teachings of this tour and deeply ponder its messages, it would inspire us to live in accordance with nature and to be rooted in spirit which honors the rights of everyone. This tour is about inspiring and encouraging respect for each other and to respect our sacred responsibilities to be caretakers of and speakers for Mother Earth. The Spirit Tour is meant to inspire us to show respect for nature's authority that is based on balance and harmony. The Spirit Tour is meant to inspire us to follow nature's laws that serve to nurture, teach, and guide our lives towards survival. The Spirit Tour is meant to help us to return the deep love we all receive from Mother Earth. The Spirit Tour is meant to help us to return to the beginning, the beginning that holds the memory of the original instructions that we were all given on how to be a human being that reflects respect and kindness for all life. It is, it is, it was with humility and understanding that we as the Elder Circle Seven represented our people the best way we knew how with whatever, albeit limited knowledge that each of us carried with the great help and participation of architectural historian Doc, Dr. Frank Albo and Chandra Erwinson, representing the Canadian Museum for Human Rights. We have done our best to represent our original peoples as Anishinaabe, Cree, and Dakota. And we take full responsibility for what we have shared. We present this story knowing 
that it is an attempt to capture the fullness and the richness and the beauty of the original people of this land. We acknowledge the fact that we could never transfer our way of life through written words alone. We are an oral people. Sacred law cannot be written. It must be spoken, heard, and lived. Our way of life is meant to be lived and experienced. Our words are meant to inspire and guide our fellow human beings to follow the path of the heart. The spirit tour is meant to inspire us to become united, to walk together in the footsteps of our ancestors as they lead us into the future when finally we will treat each other with absolute respect and recognize that we are all equal in the eyes and the love of the Great Spirit. And where we can finally treat our home, Mother Earth, with the deep, profound love and respect that she deserves. Miigwech, ekose, opida, thank you. Thank you. Il quitte la scène et Angela s'adresse au public. Thank you, David. And again, thank you to the elders. And I just want to acknowledge uh, Dr. Albo, who's also in the audience today. So thank you for being here, Dr. Albo. And that is all for our speakers for today. We have many exciting months ahead of us at the museum with school programs starting and the launch of the Mikanakea cultural experience and num numerous other events and activities. Nous avons maintenant le temps pour une période de questions et de réponses. Il y a deux microphones dans la salle. Uh, si vous voulez lever votre main et quelqu'un va vous apporter un micro. Encore une fois, si vous regardez cette émission en ligne, vous pouvez envoyer votre question par Twitter en utilisant le mot clic MCDP2014 ou en écrivant sur la page Facebook du musée. And so now uh, is our time for a question. We have two microphones in the back of the room. If you just want to signal, uh, one of the members of our staff will bring the microphone to you. Please raise your hand. If you are watching online, you can also submit questions by tweeting them to hashtag CMHR2014 or through our Facebook page. Uh, thank you to those who have already submitted questions. Any questions that we are not able to respond to during the session will be posted on the museum's website at a later date. And we have a number of members of our executive and directors here to help with responding to the questions. So can I open the floor to any questions? Do we have anything online? I guess we answered everything. A number of our speakers are available to the media afterwards. And of course, if you're here as a member of the public, I'm sure they'd be welcome to talk to you a little bit more about their presentations. And that marks then, unless I see any last, that marks then the end of our question and answer period. Um, now, we'd invite you to stay and visit the museum's galleries. Go to Ira Bistro, stop in the boutique. Admissions to the galleries today are free to recognize International Human Rights Day. And we are open this evening until 9 p.m. And there are many activities taking place today and we hope that you have a chance to take in part in some of them. As Jacques mentioned earlier, there are artisans at the boutique throughout the day. Feel free to visit with them and hear their stories, learn more about their products and their art. There is also a special Canadian citizenship ceremony with Citizenship and Immigration Canada and the province of Manitoba that is taking place right here in the Bonnie and John Bueller Hall at 1.30 this afternoon. Tonight, we are co-hosting an evening of traditional music and dance with the Assembly of First Nations from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. So you're also welcome to join us in that event. 
Alors, l'entrée au musée est gratuite aujourd'hui à l'occasion de la Journée internationale des droits de la personne et nous sommes ouvertes jusqu'à 21 heures. Et nous présentons en collaboration avec l'Assemblée des Premières Nations une soirée de musique et de danse de 18 h à 21 h Donc, joignez-vous à nous plus tard si vous pouvez le faire. And so with that, I would like to, again, uh, just point that David is available. If you want more information about the tour uh, or want to learn how to pre-register to take part in this tour, there is information at our media table. And Dave's, David's remarks are also available on www.turtlelodge.org, so on their website. And uh, that's just the last little bit of housekeeping there. And uh, I think that brings our session to a close. So thank you again for taking the time, uh, for walking with us on this journey, and we look forward to continuing to engage with you in the months and the years to come. Merci à tous et à toutes, et bonne journée. Thank you. La caméra se dirige vers le mur de graffiti et elle effectue un zoom sur le cercle de lumière et l'image disparaît progressivement.